witchcraft is broken and the scarlet witch is on a journey across the globe to fix it and as she solves magical crimes and pieces witchcraft back together one vital question remains who shattered it in the first place Welcome everybody to another exciting episode, another edition of A Week in Geekdom here on YouTube. I am your host, Giovanni Menendez, and today, folks, I bring you another epic review, this time for a title I have been meaning to read and talk about with you guys for a very, very long time. The James Robinson run on Scarlet Witch. Now, what is this book about? For this review, I'm only going to talk about uh, the first volume, which consists of the first five issues. I'm not going to spoil anything. Don't worry about it. Just an overall impression of what I think uh, about the Scarlet Witch. And if you would like to see more reviews in this series, there are two other volumes. Let me know down below. But yeah, uh, what is The Scarlet Witch all about? And James writes a fantastic little story about, you know, a solo adventure. Rarely we get those nowadays. Everything has to be an event. Everything has to be a team up or some sorts. This, you get Wanda all by herself trying to figure out why things are going awry. Like people are getting possessed. People are getting angrier than usual. Spells are being casted. Little peculiar things that shouldn't happen are amplified and are happening in a much quicker and uh, visceral way. And it's up to our Scarlet Witch here to find out what exactly happened. Now, the idea of a solo character going on a journey like this without any help from any of the Avengers or mutants or none of that is actually pretty cool because we get a lot of time to examine the character especially one that has such a varied history she has a lot of weight on her shoulders a lot of character history and she gets to express all of that and i guess vent some of that frustration with agatha and uh, and don't worry if you don't know about certain characters you really don't need to know that much you can just continue reading no problem whatsoever so yeah with agatha's help you get a character that can talk to somebody and not just be a whole freaking monologue for a whole trade in this case for five issues because this is a very small trade just the first five and yeah it's a very interesting position to have this character where she is dealing with a lot and trying to reinvigorate herself and let everybody know that she is a completely different renewed person ever since uh, children's crusade actually when she did everything possible to get her children back and then of course the mutants came back and all that stuff so things have changed the panorama has changed somewhat and i'm not an x-men expert or anything but i would like to think they have changed for the better but yeah this you don't have to worry about none of that is a very self-contained story and like i mentioned at the beginning of the video witchcraft has been broken the spells are gonna awry and it's up to her to find out what exactly is happening. She's going to traverse different lands from New York to uh, Greek islands in Santorini and to the uh, Irish plains and, and everywhere else in between. And along the way, you're going to meet some fantastical characters, some very interesting antagonists and some very, very cool visuals that I was seriously impressed. Now, usually I'm not a fan of a book having so many artists because I like a singular vision. That's, that's just the way I am. But in this case, just as it is with magic, it's all about deceit and not looking at things at first glance. There's more uh, to it. So it's befitting that this book would have very different art styles. You get Vanessa Del Rey, you get Marco Rudy, you get Steve Dillon, may he rest in peace. You get Chris Visions and you got Javier Pulido. And overall, they just craft a very cool story, a very interesting tale. And James captures the essence of this magical world pretty well, in my opinion. James is a very cool writer. I love his style. And you get a Wanda that knows her stuff. She's a veteran, but she can still be surprised when new elements pop up. There is this character that is uh, the Minotaur, which is the slight little spoiler on my part. And that was actually one of my favorite parts because I love the whole 
uh, Greek mythology and all that stuff, and to have a comic book set in in uh, Greece, that's always a plus. So yeah, the art is fantastic. It has some really cool panels. The first starting issues have a very plain, solid grid to them, but as the story progresses, just like magic and enchantments and spells, the art gets really diverse and the paneling, uh, you know, you're taking on this weird psychedelic journey, if you will, trying to read the whole book, switching from this side to the other side. It's a very creative way to present the story that otherwise would be kind of bland because most of the time people are just talking. One of my favorite panels, and this is a slight spoiler, like I said, it's just, it looks way too badass. And it's this very epic confrontation between the Scarlet Witch and the Minotaur. And with the shadowing, you get the rest of the panels and the dialogue and all that stuff. I just thought it was really creative, really cool. And of course, highlighting the red in her costume throughout. Most of the zines are very, uh, heavy on color or they're or sometimes they're subdued you get very big splashes of colors like over here where you get a ton of coloring but yeah uh in every single page what i do like is that your eye immediately focuses on wanda but if you're not paying attention you're gonna miss out on some of the details you know what i think it's special about this scarlet witch book is the fact that you have a character that has such a deep knowledge of the mystic arts and all that stuff and now it's that she's realized like hey the magical side of things is really broken and everything's in disarray it's up to her to pick up the pieces because no other character can do it sure she may call on some help from characters like dr strange and stuff but it's not about that it's about her journey of self-discovery and self-understanding and what makes her tick what makes her such a fascinating and sort of mysterious character you get a really deep analysis if you will on her uh, state of mind with things like uh, aging and the effects of witchcraft on her soul and all that stuff so I find it really interesting what James Robinson is trying to do now I'm not a fan of the villain choices in this book but they do make sense part of why I didn't like them that much was because uh, I'll be honest with you I had no idea who they were but I quickly googled them up and I quickly picked up on what was happening. But that's just my opinion. It's still a very solid and interesting story that I highly recommend. It's very unlikely that this series will get a oversized hardcover, but do yourself a favor and pick this series up. It deserves it. It's a wonderful addition to the Marvel library. So yeah, definitely volume one, which is Road and the whole series as a whole, I would highly recommend. If you are a fan of the character, if you're a fan of, uh, the magical mystical side of marvel so yeah thank you guys for tuning in for another exciting episode another installment of a week in geekdom here on youtube i am your host Giovanni Menendez, and as always you can follow me on your favorite social media platform from facebook twitter instagram snapchat and many more just type a week in geekdom and i'm there for you guys all right i gotta go i have more books to review and i will catch you on our next video